Hi, welcome back. Today, we're diving into a very exciting and practical topic, how to configure logs in JSON format using Log4j2. Now, let me set the stage for you. Imagine you're working on a microservice architecture and deploying your services in the cloud. Logging plays a crucial role in monitoring and debugging. But raw text logs? They're not efficient for modern cloud environments. In such setups, logs often need to be exported to tools like Elasticsearch and visualized using tools like Kibana. These tools work best with structured logs, and JSON is the go-to format for structured logging. JSON logs make it easier to query, filter, and analyze specific fields, helping you troubleshoot faster. In this video, I'll take you step-by-step -step through how to configure Log4j2 to generate JSON logs. When it comes to logging in JSON format, Log4j2 provides two main options. JSON layout, a simpler option with a fixed JSON structure, suitable for basic use cases. JSON template layout, a much more flexible and powerful layout for creating customizable JSON logs. In this video, we'll focus on the JSON template layout because of its advanced capabilities. Think of JSON template layout as a tool that gives you complete control over how your logs are structured in JSON. It's like designing your own log blueprint to include exactly what you need, making your logs highly useful for debugging, monitoring, and analyzing in tools like Elasticsearch and Kibana. Why use JSON template layout? JSON template layout gives you the power to design your log messages exactly the way you want. Unlike fixed formats, it allows you to define a custom JSON structure, so you can include fields that are most relevant for your application. Add custom fields, reorder log entries, or include nested objects, all by defining a custom template. If you're integrating with specialized log aggregation systems or analytics tools, JSON template layout gives you the control to match their exact logging format requirements. Now, let's set up JSON template layout in your Log4j2 configuration. First, we need to make sure that your palm.xml includes the required Log4j2 dependencies for logging in JSON format. First, open your palm.xml file. To enable JSON template layout for logging, we'll need to add the Log4j layout template JSON dependency. This dependency will help us use the JSON template layout to log data in JSON format. Once you've added that, make sure to reload your project to ensure all dependencies are fetched. All right, let's dive in and start customizing our JSON log layout. First, we need to open external libraries and expand the jar file we added earlier. Here you'll see predefined JSON layouts like JSON layout.json, JELF layout.json, and more. These layouts are ready to be used as is, but today we're going to create our own custom JSON layout. Create a file called employee service layout.json. This is where we'll define our custom log format. You can name it anything you like, but for this example, we'll stick to employee service layout.json. Inside this new file, we're going to copy the contents of json layout.json. Why? because it already has a great structure for logging in JSON format, and we're going to build on top of it. It saves us time and ensures we follow the right structure. Now, let's dive into the structure of our JSON log. As you can see on my screen, I've selected the thread section. In the JSON format, the thread will be the key, and it will print the corresponding value. You can define your own key names, but make sure they make sense so it's clear in the log output. If we look at the top, you'll see keys like logger name, message, and others. These are all customizable. 
whatever key you define, that's exactly what will appear in your JSON log. So, if you name something request ID, you'll see request ID in the log output, and its corresponding value will be printed next to it. Next, you'll notice that all of these keys have a resolver. What's a resolver? It's basically the logic that defines what data should be printed for each key. For example, if you've defined the key as thread, the resolver knows that it should fetch the current thread name, thread ID, and thread priority. As seen on my screen, this dependency already provides a lot of predefined resolvers. These resolvers handle common data types like thread name, thread ID, log level, and more. You don't have to write them from scratch, as log4j2 has already implemented these for you. This saves a lot of time and effort, and you can just use them by referencing the right key in your JSON layout. These predefined resolvers are ready to use, making it super easy to format and log data efficiently without any extra customization. In case you need more specific or unique data, you can always create custom resolvers, but for now, let's stick with the built-in ones and see how they work in our JSON logs. All right, let's take a closer look at this. As you can see on my screen, in the resolver for the thread key, we've given the value thread. This directly triggers the thread resolver class to resolve and fetch the right data for us. Now, let's dive into what happens behind the scenes. Since we've specified the thread key in our layout, the thread resolver is activated to grab the thread-related details. It's responsible for pulling data like the thread name, thread ID, and thread priority. Exactly. In the same way, for every other key in the JSON structure, there is a corresponding predefined resolver. These resolvers are already built into the library, so you don't need to worry about writing custom logic for them. For example, if we're dealing with the logger name key in the layout, a logger resolver will be triggered to resolve and print the logger name. Similarly, for keys like message, timestamp, or level, each of them has a predefined resolver that fetches the appropriate information for that specific key. Now, let's dive into how the fields work in our layout. As you can see, each key in our JSON structure has a corresponding resolver, which is responsible for retrieving and formatting the data based on that key. For example, thread resolver is responsible for resolving information related to threads, like the thread's name, ID, and priority. Thread Resolver parse the field data and base on field value decide which data needs to be returned. If the field is set to name, the resolver will return the thread name. If the field is set to ID, the resolver will return the thread's ID. If the field is set to priority, it will return the thread's priority. In the same way, every other resolver works for its corresponding field, pulling the necessary data and ensuring that your log is structured properly. This ensures you get accurate and detailed information in the logs, based on what you define in your JSON layout. Now, Let's talk about nested structures in the JSON layout. As you can see on my screen, this structure is a bit more complex, it's nested. In this case, we have a structure where there are two keys inside, epic second and nano of second. These keys have their own resolvers, and just like before, these resolvers are responsible for fetching the correct data. So what happens is that within each nested structure, the corresponding resolver will define what data is needed. For example, the epic second resolver would return the timestamp in epic seconds, and the nano of second resolver would return the timestamp's nanosecond precision. This nested structure allows you to have more detailed and organized logging, where you can store and retrieve multiple pieces of related information in a hierarchical manner. This is super useful when you need to log data that's more complex, like timestamps or any other data that benefits from a structured format. It makes your logs more readable and easier to analyze. Now, let's open our log4j2.yml configuration file and add the new configuration. Define a new console appender. Name it console JSON template layout appender.
Now, the next step is to add the JSON template layout inside this appender. Inside the JSON template layout, specify event template URI. Then, we need to point the event template URI to the layout file we just created. I created a file called employeeservicelayout.json, so I'll use that as the path. You should use the file name you've defined in your project. Let's make sure we're following along with the same steps and don't miss any details. Now that we've defined our JSON template layout console appender, it's time to link it with the logger. Previously, we were using the default console appender to print plain text logs. But now, it's time to replace that with our shiny new console JSON template layout appender. Watch closely as I update the logger configuration. All right, let's restart our application now. Great. Now, let's check out the logs. As you can see on my screen, every single line is now formatted in JSON. All right, let's clear the console logs first. Now, let's hit our API. As you can see, the logs are printed in JSON format, structured exactly as per the configuration we defined in employeeservicelayout.json. Each log entry contains all the keys we added, making it super easy to track the flow of requests and debug effectively. This format is especially useful for handling large-scale applications and cloud-based deployments. The actual log message is printed under the message key. The MDC values are listed under the context map key, showing all the context-specific details like request IDs or custom values we added earlier. And so on. Let's format one of the JSON log lines to make it easier to read. As you can see in this JSON log, we have several key fields that are clearly structured. Instant, this is the timestamp when the log entry was created. Thread, this shows which thread was responsible for generating the log. Message, this is the message field, containing the actual log message. As you can see, the log is using the epoch time, which isn't very human readable. We can improve this by adding a custom field for the date and time in a more readable format. Let's do that. Modify our employee JSON layout.json to include a custom field that will show the logs timestamp in a more friendly format. As you can see on my screen, let's follow the steps to add the custom timestamp field. First, we add a key called timestamp. This will be the main field where we store the logs timestamp. Then, we define a resolver for this key. We use the timestamp resolver because it is already predefined and it also returns the date and time in our required format. Add a key called pattern. This defines the format for the timestamp. In the pattern, we'll specify the format for the date and time. Add your date format value corresponding to format. Now start the application.
As you can see in the logs now, every JSON logline has the timestamp printed, and it's showing the log's precise time. This timestamp gives us a clear view of when exactly each log entry was made, making it much easier to trace events or diagnose issues based on time. Now, with a custom timestamp pattern we've added, it ensures that the logs contain the correct, formatted date and time. You can get this layout JSON file directly from my GitHub. I'll drop the link in the description below. All right, let's quickly recap what we've covered today. We learned how to log in JSON format using Log4J2's JSON template layout. We customized the log structure, added a timestamp, and even formatted it for better readability. We've set up everything to ensure that our logs are easy to understand and ready to be exported to systems like Elasticsearch. Now, your logs aren't just messages, they're well-structured data. But that's not all. In our next video, we'll dive deeper and learn how to write custom resolvers, so you can have even more control over what gets logged and how it's formatted. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit subscribe, like the video, and turn on notifications, so you never miss out on our latest tutorials. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one.